It has been my pleasure to have worked with the Arthritis National Research Foundation to bring you over two years of interviews with Arthritis Now. Unfortunately, this will be my last episode as your host, and although I'm sad to say goodbye, I'm very excited to see where they're going to go next. This week, we're going to be interviewing Ann Stevens from Seattle Children's Hospital and her exciting research in the field of autoimmunity. Hi, Dr. Stevens. Thank you so much for being on Arthritis Now with us. We really appreciate it. I'm glad to be here. Great. And so I was, you know, looking into some of your research, and um, it's very multifaceted. <laughs> so I'm going to touch briefly on a few of the um, topics that you are kind of or that you are studying that you have studied in the past. Um, you had done work regarding scleroderma. Um, could you explain what that disease is, and then your research regarding it? Scleroderma is a terrible disease that is is best known for its effects on the skin. So hard skin, which occurs because of inflammation into the deep areas of the skin, which um, leads to scarring or fibrosis of the skin. So the patients come to the attention of their primary care physicians because they might get very tight skin over their hands, very tight skin over their faces. Um, the scarring due to inflammation also occurs in the internal organs, and it can be a fatal disease because of fibrosis or scarring of the lungs, of the heart, of the intestines, causing malnutrition. The inflammation pathways, the cells and the inflammation hormones that are involved, look very much like what's going on in a disease called graft versus host disease, which is seen in bone marrow transplant patients where the, the, um, the foreign bone marrow attacks the new host and sees it as a foreign body oh. and causes this chronic inflammation. So, you know, like when you get a kidney transplant, your own immune system can attack this foreign kidney and try to reject it, and that process is an inflammatory process. It's the white blood cells um, that are attacking the kidney. And in graft-versus-host disease, it's the opposite. It's the foreign bone marrow, white blood cells, that are attacking the host. And they get the same processes in the skin and can even develop the lung disease, as we see in scleroderma. The diseases look very similar. So we've been studying the poss possibility that foreign cells in children with scleroderma could be triggering this inflammation. And the foreign cells would come from their mothers, which they derived when they were a fetus in the uterus of their mother. That was actually my next question. I was going <laughs> to ask you to kind of go into more. You're looking at whether autoimmune diseases are transferred from mother to child um, during pregnancy. Is it, is it just scleroderma? Is it a lot of other diseases too? What, what have your findings been in that regard? So most of my work has been in scleroderma and also another disease um, of intense inflammation in multiple organs called lupus. Um, and what we found is that, um, that the child's immune system seems to lose normal tolerance to these maternal cells that are throughout the body. All of us, you and I and all of our friends, probably have maternal cells living in us that, we, that came into our bodies when we were fetuses. Um, and that's probably very normal. And what we think is that in some cases the combination of genes between the mother and the child um, are such that, they, that the child's immune system recognizes those maternal cells and attacks them. They look more foreign to the child. So we've done studies looking at the genes of the mother and the genes of the child to identify combinations that seem to be put the child at risk. So, and then there, I, there, I know there was another kind of um, specific kind of protein that you were looking at. I think it was called a PDL1 protein. Um, could you kind of explain what that is and how it contributes to lupus? We all have maternal cells within our bodies, suggesting that our immune systems are able to tolerate these mother's proteins. We only share half of our genes with our mothers, so the other half of the genes that she brings into our bodies should be looked at as our, by our immune systems as foreign. But they're not. We tolerate them just fine. We don't, we're not attacked to have this chronic inflammation. So what we've found is that this, these immune cells that are supposed to be tolerant to mother cells seem to lose it in diseases like scleroderma and lupus. And one of the molecules that's responsible for keeping our immune systems under control is called program death ligand 1, PDL1. 
So this is a molecule that gets turned on during inflammation to turn off the immune system. So when you get an infection, your immune system has to get all hyped up and cause this inflammation, but then it has to turn off so that you can go back to your healthy self. And PDL1 turns off the immune system. What we found in patients with lupus, now this is lupus, a different, different inflammatory disease, um, that they are, do not, are not able to make very high levels of PDL1. So they have a defective production of the off signal. And is PDL1, it, it exists in everyone or is it specifically, well, yeah, it must exist in everyone then, right? Mm -hmm. It's a very common, it's a very common mechanism for the immune system to turn itself off. It's actually a mechanism that, um, that, that tumors, cancers use to turn off the immune system, so allow to allow the cancer to grow. Oh, okay. So There's a molecule that blocks PDL1 that's being used for cancer treatment that will help us to replace the PDL1 signal to give us this off signal back again. Thanks for watching part one of our interview with Dr. Ann Stevens. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, check us out at curearthritis.org for all the latest info on the foundation, and share this video on Facebook and Twitter to help raise arthritis awareness.